Melanie here from Krakenosh. Today I'm going to be talking about some wardrobe doors, wardrobe, wardrobe even, <laughs> doors that I made over in my son's bedroom. Um, as you can see from this picture here, they are uh, like timber sort of doors. They have a beautiful satin type varnish. So what you can see here are the doors removed from my son's cupboard and just lent up against the wall. I tried to put them uh, against the wall so they would have as much light as possible because I don't know if you've done any painting before but light is probably my biggest enemy when I'm painting. I want to take you through the process of what I did to update them. It was really scary because I didn't want to screw this up because I can't afford to buy more doors like that. So I did some uh, research online. Well, I actually looked up lots of different people's ideas on how to go about this job. But a couple of years ago, I actually renovated our kitchen, which had the Laminex cupboard doors. And I decided that I would use exactly the same method that I used to, lam to repaint my laminated door kitchen uh, on these cupboards, because the finish was very much the same. So, or you can see the sheen here, and I've got some stuff down the bottom there. That was just... Um, some personal protective equipment I used uh, in painting the doors because the surface prep of these doors required that I use a petroleum based product. It was called Easy Surface Preparation. What it does, um, you, you just wipe it on, it's really easy, there's no elbow grease required at all. You just get a sponge um, with a like a scourer on one side, the green scourers, not the nose scratch scourers, they don't work properly. And you just um, dip it, I had gloves on and a face mask because this stuff stank, I opened all the windows and you just, I just had a little bowl and I dipped the sponge in it and then I wiped it, um, the scour side down so the scour was rubbing on the wood. I wiped that all over the wood and paid really close attention to in the grooves um, because the paint can be a little tricky to stick inside those little crevices if you don't get that preparation product in there. So I, you wipe all that on with a green scourer and then once you've wiped you know, one door from the top to the bottom then you just wipe it off and then you just let it dry completely which probably takes about, the can says um, after half an hour and it's dry that it's paintable so I probably waited a good half a day, I went and did something else and, and came back to it. So what you're seeing now is the first coat of paint I've applied. So I've done all the surface prep, I've wiped it off, let it dry, and this is the first coat of paint I've applied. Now at this stage I'm just kind of thinking, oh my god, I hope this works out because it looks a shambles <laughs> as it is. I'm thinking, oh no, I hope I've done the right thing. But I, I knew that after this, the second and, and possibly third coat, it's going to look really, really cool. So at this stage I'm just concentrating on not building up any texture in the paint. So I'm trying really carefully, if I overlap, to not leave any, you know, get really side on um, to your paint surface and really make sure that you haven't left any drips or, um, you know, where the roller has um, lines have crossed over each other. There's no actual line in the paint you can see because that's going to ruin your finish. You want it to be really, really flat in between coats. Now I didn't sand in between coats. Um, you can, I guess, but I, I'm a little lazy, I suppose. I didn't really want to, so that's what I did. Um, and what I used here, I used a, a micro foam roller. So there's the product I used. Um, really cheap, comes in a 10 pack, so you can just throw it away when you're done because the paint was oil based. Uh, too hard to wash that and get it perfect so there's no paint in it so I just bought a 10 pack and discarded each one after I finished with it and um, this is exactly what it looks like your um, paint roller goes in there and it clicks clicks on once it's finished and if you can see but it's really high density super squishy and uh, there's no um, bits sticking out the sides there it's just a super squishy and on the end um, it's rounded so you can all, also use the end of that roller to get sort of in in some of those nooks and crannies nooks and crannies oh actually I need to tell you what I did on the edges so I didn't take a picture of it but what I did here is 
see the um, the trim work in the middle and down the side of each of the doors what I did there is the sides and the edges I did with a brush and I was really careful on the edges that it you know came over to the front that I didn't put too much uh, paint on my brush I was fairly generous with my paint there I didn't worry about um, you know uh, slapping it on that uh, thickly I just made sure it didn't drip that was my biggest concern the corners were a little tricky I sort of had to you know, uh, do a little few light touch touches with that really feathery end of the brush. Um, if I can say as well, get the best paint brushes that you can afford because that again makes a huge difference to the quality of your finish. So yeah, ed I did the edges first and then I roll it in the big flat parts in big sections at a time as you can probably see here. This overlapping didn't make any difference to the finished um, doors which you'll see later. I was a little worried about that. I didn't do this door as good as I did um, the other one next to it. I was quite happy with this one. Um, I guess I just got a bit confident over here and overlapped a little, but it kind of worked out okay. Second coat, pretty obvious what's going on here. I only remembered halfway through. Whoops, I better take a picture. So this is just after two coats. You can already see um, that, well, I kind of felt here, everything's going to be okay. <laughs> And here's the third and final coat. I reckon it looks pretty good, nice and shiny. Believe it or not, the walls behind that are actually a really light pale blue. The ceiling's white. And um, this particular color of paint, I'll put down for you in the comments so you can see exactly what it's called. And what you can see on the edge here is um, on, on the left here is my son's bunk bed and this on the right is a slide that attaches to his bed so I painted that as well as kind of like a test to see how the paint would work um, and I used exactly the same method on the bed and the slide as I did on the doors as a kind of test so I, I didn't want to stuff up those doors the bed there I could replace that or just paint over it. No one really looks at a bed, but the doors, uh, wardrobe doors were part of the house and I, I just was stressing out about that. But I reckon it turned out pretty nice. So here's a bit of a before and after. The carpet's being replaced by the way, so <laughs> if you're doing any painting at all and getting your carpets done, do your carpets afterwards. I guess that's pretty obvious. And there's the cupboard doors put back in place. Cat's pretty happy. There's my little Smeagol down there. <laughs> and I've already painted the walls in this shot. And I also this around the edge uh, was a timber trim as well that I prepped and painted in exactly the same way as the wardrobe itself, the wardrobe doors themselves. So I'm really happy with the way that turned out. Um, I was really nervous and stressing out about it, but if you buy the best equipment that you can afford, take your time, do some research, um, it can all go your way. <laughs> Thanks for watching guys. I hope it's given you a bit of courage to go ahead and try your own project. Give it a go. Anyway, bye bye and thanks for watching.